I'm Rachel here with Ari and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer podcast. This week we're on episode 202 and we're joined by a guest as we ask, what are the benefits to writing in multiple genres? Before we dive into the topic, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening if you haven't already. And if you enjoy the show, please share it with friends and feel free to write a review. Now, please help us welcome China Powell to the show. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, China. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to talking about this topic. I, I love talking about genre and form writing, so I'm really excited about this. Yeah, we're looking forward to it too. We, when we saw the topic idea, it was like, oh yeah, this is going to be a good one, definitely. So before we go into this a bit further, would you like to tell everyone why you wanted to discuss writing multiple genres and forms? Um, so mainly because it's not talked about as lightly as I think it should be as someone who um, loves writing in multiple genres and multiple forms. Um, I think that it's a great way to work on building creativity. Also, I feel like a lot of writers, especially newer writers, get pigeonholed into a genre. Let's say they started writing, you know, maybe fantasy or science fiction. And so they just keep writing, it, even if they don't particularly want to, just because, well, this is what I'm used to. So I think that um, eventually it can become a burden and actually hurt their creative process and hurt their writing. I think that's an excellent way to look at it is that it really does boost your creativity. And I mean, we are, we're always saying that the more you write, the more you practice, the better you are at writing and you'll find your writer's voice and you'll just come into your own. And it's certainly okay if people prefer one genre over another, but it's so good to broaden your horizons a bit and go a little bit out of your comfort zone. I, I definitely agree with that because even if you don't, write in another genre for you know let's like for monetary reasons if you don't write to publish in that genre I tell um like clients and friends people in my writing circle maybe try free writing in a different genre or free writing in a different form just to help with you know trying something new just to help boost that creative process but it, it does help um stimulate your your brain to uh, try new things and it, it makes you want to do more it it makes you want to grow as a writer and as sometimes as a writer you get in that oh okay it's time to make the donuts kind of mood mentality and so when you do something new it can remind you why you wanted to be a writer in the first place I remember when I first started writing, the biggest piece of writing advice that I received was you just pick a genre and stick to it because that'll be part of your author brand down the road and yada, yada, yada. And that's what I did because that's what I thought I had to do. But when I started branching out into other genres that I like to read in and, you know, genres that I like to play video games in, it like opened up a whole new world for me. And it's so refreshing. So with that said, I'm just going to roll right into it and ask, what is the impact of writing in different genres? So you kind of what you, you said, Rachel, you get an appreciation of other genres first and foremost, um, because you might read a genre, you might love watching different shows or um, maybe playing games in genres that you don't write in, but you don't really understand how hard it is to work in that genre until you try to write it yourself. Like I, I will love, I love like watching science fiction. I never knew how hard it is uh, to like get everything until I tried writing a science fiction story. And, and I realized that's a lot of work. You don't understand how hard it is to write historical fiction. You don't appreciate it as much until you realize all the research that goes into it to make sure things are historically accurate, to make sure that characters are wearing the right sets of clothing that the food you know matches the setting things of that nature so you appreciate um the genre more and when you appreciate something more you respect it more you you um don't take it for granted also you begin to see what areas you're strong in. you get to begin to see what areas maybe you can work in work on as you grow as a writer Perhaps your strengths are in building character. You, you know, you stick with your characters and your characters are strong from the, from the get-go. 
but maybe your dialogue isn't as strong or maybe you aren't that great with description. And in some genres, that's very important. Let's say you're writing, you know, a Gothic literature and Gothic literature setting and description is almost more important than the, the, the characters this, because the setting takes so much precedence over what happens to the characters. The, the setting is like a character in and of itself. Um, so if, you're, if you've never written Gothic before, you would have never noticed that maybe you need to, you know, work on that. So you, it kind of helps you to see where you can grow as a writer. Um, you also can kind of see uh, where your strengths lie in tropes and what tropes you tend to rely on too much, too heavily on. Um, let's say you, you write romance and you tend to rely on the tropes because you, you're so used to writing in them. They just come second nature so that uh, you rely on reader's expectations a little too much and you've kind of grown stunted in cre creative process. You're not doing anything new. Um, so when the, when you're writing in a different genre that has different tropes, you tend to realize, huh, this, you know, they're in the same hotel, only one bed does not work in, you know, a horror story. <laughs> like, that, that does not work. And that, that actually works when you're writing in different forms as well. If you're, if you're writing, you know, if you tend to write, uh, very long prose and you, you're trying to write, you know, a chat book, you, you can't say the same things you would, you know, in a hundred thousand words as you can in 50 pages. And the same thing with screenplays because screenplays are all about the, the action. There, there's a lot less dialogue. There's a lot less description than you would see in, let's say a play or something of that nature. So you kind of pre get the same um, things that I was talking about, the appreciation, you kind of see where you, where your strengths lie and what things you uh, tend to fall back on a little bit too much, even when you, you're trying to, you know, experiment in another form. I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is when you do write in another form, for example, people take a look at screenplays and look at poetry, and I think they see that there's in most cases, less words on the page. So they just automatically assume it's easier because it's quote unquote less work. And that's not the case at all. I mean, screenplays, I've tried writing screenplays before. It's a lot of fun, but formatting is everything. And there's a lot of abbreviations that you need to learn and know. And there's a lot more work that goes into it than most people think. In a way, I would probably say that writing a novel is probably the easiest form of writing. But I, that's probably, that's just my opinion. And I think when you do try those other forms, you do try those other genres. I agree with you. Yeah, you do get a different appreciation of those forms and genres. And it kind of gives you a whole different perspective on writing in general, pretty much. I have to say, I find it interesting that there is a kind of a push with some people in the writing community regarding sticking to one genre, you know, and I think there's the the essence of that kind of, it's almost like a tagline, isn't it? It's like, you've got Stephen King, you know, the king of horror, and that, although he has written things that aren't horror, I'm trying to think, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely a few that weren't horror. But you have this uh, this thing, and I know there was a push with some with a lot of new writers where it was like, if you could have the tagline like a YA author or a YA fantasy author. And I find it interesting because we're told that the best thing to do is read widely. If you want to be a good writer, you should read widely. You should read horror. You should read romance. You should read action uh, stories because then you can pick and choose those those elements and learn that. And yet, as you said, it's the same thing happens if you write widely, even if you want to publish only romance books or only science fiction books. I do think you're right. I think there should be a, a bigger push, not a bigger push. I don't, want, I don't want to make it sound like we, everyone should do it. But I think it should be more appreciated that writing different types of genre, even if you decide, you know what, I'm never going to publish my sci-fi <laughs> or I'm never going to publish my my romance I definitely think it would help. I mean, I started writing. What the hell did I start writing? I can't even remember. It's been so long. But I remember I liked um, Police Procedural when I was younger. 
that was too much NYPD blue. And then I like sci-fi because I really love Star Trek. And then it sort of morphed into um, fantasy. And then it was like more modern fantasy. And I liked all the different elements. They may not have all been written well, but I liked all the different elements. And I I think I my writing got stronger because I wrote different genres. And I know that some people do, a, they, there's a lot of push with with uh, in some groups where it's like, you make the best money if you can dominate one genre. And I feel like maybe that's true. I don't know. But at the same time, it feels very monetary driven. And I know there are some writers who are 100% monetary driven. And you know what? Hey, that's if that's what works for them, that's what works. But I think especially for new writers coming into the industry, I think the impact of writing different genres is so beneficial I think it should be kind of encouraged or suggested rather than just you know give yourself a tagline as being sci-fi writer or a fantasy writer or you know and and never mentioning that you do any other form of writing and as you said all the different forms as well I mean I've I've done things on my blog where I've encouraged people to join and do short stories or flash fictions and the number of people who reached out saying I'd love to do that but I don't write flash fiction and it's like, well, no, you won't until you do it. <laughs> you know, you can still do it. You can still try it. It's not like you're locked out of doing flash fiction or short stories. It's like, yes, it's different. And as someone who has tried to write short stories and they've always morphed into not one book, but multiple books in a series, it is hard. But I still managed to sort of condense tightly enough to write a short story or to write a flash fiction. And it's fun to try. It's not easy. And sometimes you look at it going, oh, my God, that's just awful. And especially if you're doing like a competition and there's a like a word count <laughs> and they're like a thousand words and you've got eight thousand in your life. I've got to cut a lot. It's difficult, but I think it's definitely beneficial personally. I, I definitely agree with that. Actually, um, I was at a writing conference this past summer and I consider myself a fiction writer. I've written other things in the past that I consider myself primarily a fiction writer. And so I decided to take the poetry workshop um, just to challenge myself to do something I I don't really do. And I've written poetry in the past, but I hadn't written poetry um, at this point in maybe six or seven years, maybe like, and so I decided, you know, I'm going to take this poetry workshop. And the first thing our workshop leader does is like, before we even introduce ourselves, okay, here's your prompt. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but whatever. And so we get this prompt, we write this poetry, and then we share it with the whole, you know, in front of everyone. And then we get to introduce ourselves. And that was kind of scary. And it was a two week thing. It was, it was really fun. Though. Um, it was part of the Disquiet International Literary Program. And so after I got back from that, I challenged myself to write five poems a day in, until the end of August. And so um, that has been like a very fun, challenging thing to do. And some of those poems, I look at them like, this is garbage. This is hor- horrifying. Like this is, this belongs in that drawer where that all writers have that we throw things that we shall never speak of again like (laughs) um, that like but others I'm just like this isn't too bad and then there are some that I'm like this is actually kind of good but I would have never gotten to that place if I wouldn't have challenged myself to write in the first place as an editor I tell my clients um the point of a first draft is to just have it on the page. It's going to be bad. <laughs> that's the point. It's supposed to be bad. Uh, and that's the thing about writing in a different genre. If it's your first time ever trying a different genre or a different form, it is perfectly okay if it's bad. In fact, shoot for bad, aim for bad, because then if you're if it's good, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Um, so... I, I completely agree with what you said, Ari. Uh, first of all, good for you for challenging yourself. I probably would have died at that workshop. And also writing five poems in one day for a whole month, like, geez, why five out of curiosity? I actually have no idea. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so 
the workshop we did like we followed prompts and some of the prompts were really weird like write a ars poetica and like they were really challenging so I wanted to challenge myself even more so the first month so I the the program ended in uh, in the beginning of July so the first month I was like I'll write five poems and then the second month you know what I'm going to try to write five to ten poems like anywhere my goal is you know somewhere between five to ten poems and to challenge myself even more I um I have a writing circle and I told the ladies in my writing circle um you know what so I can have some accountability I'm going to try to write with this goal of publishing these poems so I'm going to try to write enough for a, 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 at least enough to have a decent chat book or maybe even if I can have enough good ones <laughs> a book of poetry that that second one might not happen but um, so kind of just to challenge myself and to make sure that I actually get enough poems to make sure I uh, have enough to publish the, the five to ten really worked out if I were if I only write one one poem a day it's not that hard because I can say hmm here's a haiku I'm done <laughs> so I didn't want to do that I wanted to make sure that it was I was actually challenged myself to do something I um I hadn't done in a while and something um that would really make me go outside of my comfort zone as a writer I think that's an important point isn't it it's going outside the comfort zone I think we can stagnate a little too much if we sort of sit in the same thing and we don't like to push against that boundary so we sort of say and the problem with staying within a comfort zone is that comfort zone gets smaller and smaller and that's with everything you know it's like if you don't push yourself or challenge yourself in any way you'll find that the bit the, the line where the comfort zone was has actually got closer to you and shrunk a bit more so I think it's very important in all walks of life I'm just going to be nice and general to always try and push against the comfort zone a little bit uh, with that I'm going to bounce to the next question what are the benefits to writers regarding writing in different genres what aren't the benefits there are so many I could talk about this all day the key I think is that you have to actually read the other genres before you can write other genres don't just say you know what I'm going to write a book and I'm going to write this book in this genre that I've never read or watched or anything before. That, just, just to preface that, uh, it's great that you might want to try a new genre. But before you try that genre, maybe familiarize yourself with that genre a little bit. Even if you are writing never to publish, you always want to write to write well because you are your first reader. So write something that you want to read, even if it's not something you ever intend to publish. So um just to kind of preface that but one benefit I think one of the most important benefits is that you grow as a writer you um get a better understanding of subgenre um and tropes let's say you write speculative fiction well speculative fiction is a humongous umbrella but let's say you write fantasy if you write fantasy and you've always stuck with you know high fantasy elves and you know, fairies and things like that. And you, you you decide maybe you want to write an urban fantasy that takes place in Chicago or something like that. Um, you can kind of get a better understanding of how subgenre and tropes work in different forms. Also, it helps you to understand how you can get your ideas on the page. And if you're thinking, going back to what was said earlier, if you're thinking about, you know, getting your your, you know your author brand or getting your reach out there it does help you reach more readers because if you only ever write fantasy and all of a sudden you're writing science fiction you might reach readers that you know may have never seen your book before you may reach a larger audience you can also consider another uh again monetary benefits you can also consider it as another stream of income if you decide maybe, you know, I'm going to start writing nonfiction or I'm going to start writing uh, blogs or book reviews or um, doing freelance work, something like that, especially if you're a beginning writer, I think that's a great way to kind of keep your options open if you and also learn more about uh, writing because 
if you do those book reviews, you have to read more. And if you read more, you can write better. So <laughs> that, that's always something to think about. Like, like I said before, I think the biggest and most important thing is that it helps you grow as a writer because one, you um, get an appreciation for the other genres. You can understand those tropes. You can understand, okay, I, now I know why I shouldn't say she said after every single line or now I know why um, this, this trope works and this one doesn't or how to, you know, be more inclusive in my language or, you know, these things that may not have been clear to me before as I work or as I read other genres, as I write in other genres, I'm beginning to see okay, this, this makes sense now. And I didn't, I would have never noticed it if I hadn't read this genre or that genre. And just speaking from personal experience, I would never, I don't, I don't read a lot of romance. And so I challenged myself last year to start reading romance because it, it always bored me just to be honest. It, it, it was just, it was really boring. And so I would read stuff that was like, okay, it's, it's a suspense and there's maybe like a romance subgenre or something like that, but it was never, I never read romance just for romance sake. So I challenged myself to read romance. I was never able to understand how to write romance because I've never written romance. I've never written sweet scenes or anything like that, even in my writing. Like I could write couples, but my couples are always like, hmm, we're, we're together because we're, you know, getting revenge or something like that. Like, it was never sweet or innocent or kind or or cute or anything like that. But now I can kind of see, okay, now that I'm reading it, now that I'm trying, working on these things and like getting feedback on um, my, my writing, I can kind of see how to do it better going forward. So even if I never intend to actually publish a romance story, I know how to do it now. And so if I want to write something where there's a cute scene in it, now I can. And so um, I don't think I will, but it's nice knowing that I have that option. Um, full disclosure, I am all about like violence and like revenge. I'm like, that. that's my home. Like everything I write is in that sweet spot of like revenge and like adventure and... <laughs> that's great um but almost just bouncing off of what you said it's almost like you see the appeal of writing those cutesy little romance scenes I'm not a huge romance fan either so I don't have too much to say I kind of agree with you on the whole like meet meet cute type stuff but like you said earlier if you read within different genres and stuff you can kind of it's it's all um what's the word market research, audience research. You, if you read in different genres before you write in different genres or you have little snippets of other genres in your books, you know what the audience is already looking for. And that kind of helps not only improve your writing, but depending on what your goals are for writing, if you want to make a full-time income off of it, then it helps you with your marketing and so on and so forth. It's all a domino effect. I was just thinking what you said about the whole romance thing. And firstly, I am all for violence and revenge. I love revenge and betrayal in, in stories. Um, but the, yeah, it, it's actually weird. It's been something that's been in my head for a while. I have read recently quite a lot of, you know, like the um it's like the either the dark romance or the um fantasy romance. And sort of romance is part of it. It's not like a romance story, it's a fantasy story with elements of romance. And one of the things that I found and it made me think some of you writers have not read romance. Now, I'm not a big romance reader either. I do watch the odd rom-com movie. I kind of like to, if I watch too many action, violent and some horror movies, I like to soften it with some Disney and some rom-coms. You know that thing where you don't really need your brain connected? You can just sort of binge it like that. And the same with books. Every now and then I'll reach for something a bit lighter. And then you'll read some of these so-called like fantasy romances and you're watching these characters and they're developing and it's almost like the romance is just they have sex and it's like 
I think some of you don't understand that love and romance don't always automatically mean sex. It can include that, but it's not like that's not the symbol or the the like the end of like, oh, this is how we show love and romance sex. It's like I think you missed a few bits there. And there's been so many of those come out and they class themselves as romance. And I'm sat there thinking, I'm missing the romance part because you can have sex without loving someone. And that's what it feels like. It feels like you've got your characters together and there you are. That's the romance. And it's like, um, I think you need to read a romance and see what it's actually like. Because m- most romances actually have romance. They may or may not have a sex scene, but they have romance. And a lot of these books that consider themselves to be fantasy romance are missing the romance. And just when you said, you know, like just because, you know, it's like you want to add something in if you don't know. If you don't read that, you don't always know how to write it. And it's like, it's really clear at the moment. I'm seeing a lot of those things come out and it's kind of like, ooh, ouch. Yeah, no, I wouldn't class that as romance. That kind of um, goes along with what I said about how if you read and write in other genres and stuff, you kind of do the market research and it shows what your audience is expecting from romance, from fantasy, from whatever genre it may be. And I think, I mean, we can all agree that books are subjective. It's art. It's a form of art. So no two readers read the same book. They all interpret it differently. So Ari's version of romance is vastly different from somebody else's version of romance because let's all be real, uh, steamy erotica is pretty big now. I'm actually going to piggyback off of what Ari said and ask, what are the benefits to readers if you write in different genres? Kind of going off of what was said, I feel like readers can get more um, bang for their buck, for lack of a better way to say it, <laughs> if the writers know what they're doing and if they read and if they write and if, if they have experience writing in different genres. Kind of what Ari said, a reader can tell when a writer knows what they're doing or not. A reader can tell if it's romance or if this couple actually just needs to go to therapy like if they both need therapy and you know just because both of them are attractive does not mean they're a couple but a reader can also tell if if a writer is writing something and there's multiple subgenres or subplots let's say the writer is writing a mystery and there's a revenge or betrayal um somewhere along those lines but there's also romance if the writer writes in romance or has experience writing romance or writing um, in other genres, they can work towards that and they can include all that knowledge that they have in those other genres in this book. And it makes the book as as a whole better. It makes the work seem more inclusive, makes the work seem more cemented for lack of a better word. And it makes the reading more fun because we feel as though we're not just, you know, looking like on the outs, like looking from the outside, you know, watching from the window or, and we're not even just a fly on the wall, but we're one of the characters too. We might be one of those unnamed characters, you know, we might be that, you know, guy sitting in the tavern watching the characters talk to each other, but we're there. And so we don't get that if things don't line up well, we don't get that if the characters don't mesh well, or if plot A doesn't align very well with subplot b or like why is it here it doesn't fit the story of the mystery it doesn't add anything to it It just seems like it's like it's here but it doesn't really serve a purpose if a reader finds a writer who can do all these things they may find a new favorite writer or they may find that huh i've never really read this genre before but if uh this if there are other things in this genre like this i might have a new favorite or i might you know, try something out, you know, try something new and they might grow, grow in their own reading. And who doesn't need 100, 200 more books on their TBR list? I have to agree. I, I never used to read historical fiction. And I think I got it in my head that historical fictions would be big tomes and they would be really um, boring, like I find most history. And that was like a school was really good at making you really bored of history. And then I, one of my friends at work was just like reading a book and they're like, oh, you'll try it. And it was huge. And I was thinking, oh, it's going to be so dry. It's going to be like 
like reading a history book and it wasn't at all and uh, it was set I can't remember I think it was set with the Tudor period which I remember doing in school and as soon as I heard that I was like oh it's gonna be so dull and it wasn't at all and I actually got really hooked on it and I read like four or five in the series and I know if I hadn't if that hadn't have been kind of gently pushed on me going just give it a try I would never have tried it and since I read that I then found that that writer did other stuff and I started reading that stuff and then I've started looking for other authors that did historical fiction I don't think I'd ever write it because I we've, we've interviewed someone who does historical fiction and the research level is terrifying and I don't have the focus of you know my, my I'm very scattered I would be off in every direction and not focus on the important thing that you need a lot of information about but yeah it is interesting when you find a, a, an, an author and they write something and then you think oh they're actually quite good and then you find they've got another like connection with a different sort of genre and if you like one of their books there's a possibility because it's often the voice you know they put this really incredible voice in there it makes you think oh, I'll give them a try and, and read their horror <laughs> and things like that but I'm just going to piggyback off my own comment Regarding writing multiple genres, what is your thought on having separate names for them? Because I have read authors. I didn't realize it was the same author because like one of the, the books was horror and the other series was like sci-fi and they'd used a separate name to sort of divide the two away. And I didn't connect them until like years later. Do you think it's a good idea to separate or to have everything under one name? For sanity's sake, I think it depends on the author. Like for me, I, I write in multiple genres and everything's under my name. One, because I don't think I could remember a pen name or multiple pen names for every genre or form. That's just a lot of work. Nor could I handle having multiple websites for every genre or, you know, that's also a lot of work. But <laughs> that, that, and especially, um, I guess if you are published under a big five, you know, maybe they would handle that stuff for you. But if you're a burgeoning writer, you would have to take on that stuff by yourself. And that seems like a lot of work, um, handling the newsletters, all of that. If it's something that you don't mind doing, I feel like great. But I think that it adds a lot of unnecessary work, unnecessary stress. And writing is stressful enough. Um, writing is a, a stressful process. And as you mentioned, depending on what genre you're writing, there, there's a lot of research. If you write, um, whether you write crime or, um, you know, police procedural or historical fiction or science fiction, all of those take a lot of research. If Even if you write creative nonfiction, that takes a lot of research. And do you really want to be spending all that time you can spend writing and researching, uh, like creating new identities for yourself? And I do think that it's really cool. One of my favorite authors had over a hundred pen names. He wrote my favorite book, The Book of Disquiet, Fernanda Pessoa. And people didn't realize that almost everything coming out of Portugal at the time was actually written by the same person. I mean- New goal in life, <laughs> alter egos. <laughs> yeah, he, and he, he would write, his alter egos would write letters to each other. And they would, it was, it was very strange. But that's, that's another story for another time. But I think that it's, it's a lot of work. And if you do write a lot in those other genres, if you only plan on maybe writing two or three books in each genre, I don't think it's worth it. But if you're planning on writing two very separate identities, if you're planning on writing maybe like erotica and then writing children's books, please have two different names. <laughs> please do. Because you don't want like a five-year-old looking up your name and then finding something like that that's it so it really does it kind of depends on what you're writing and how much of it you're writing I, I have um, colleagues who who write very different genres or very different subject matter and they're fine with just writing it under the same name but if you if you're writing something very different like the example I just gave it might be in your best uh, interest to have a pen name or if you're writing something that say you don't want your great grandmother to read and she buys all your books maybe have a pen name for that but if you if you're if it's not something 
that you plan on spending a whole lot of time with or if you don't want to do too much splitting your brain splitting hairs like like I said I write in three or four genres primarily that would be four different identities that I'd have to keep up with that's a lot of work and so if if you write um in four different genres and you don't want to have to put up with all that work you don't have to if you if you don't feel it's necessary you you can have an author brand you can have you know all the same things and and still be a multi-genre writer I think that's an excellent point about differentiating between your erotica and your children's books first of all but also on the flip side of it I think it would be pretty cool if you wrote in two different age groups and like say you were a mom and you really like this author because she wrote really cool literary fiction and then you went onto their Amazon page and you noticed that they had a couple of like children picture books out and you could be like oh this sounds cute I can introduce my favorite author to my kid I think like there's there's so many, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. And I, I agree with you that having pen names and multiple websites and multiple Instagram accounts, that's a lot of work, unless you have the money to pay an assistant to do all that for you. I mean, my personal preference, no, people are just going to have my name. That's it. Yeah, I have to admit, the, as soon as you started saying, you know, all this and all that, it's like, wow, that's, I can barely keep up with my own basic one website that I barely change <laughs> and one newsletter the idea of having multiple is just intense I mean I think one of the issues is that I, the only thing I can imagine why it would be is there are certain genres that are still seem to be preferred by so like say men and obviously I know people can write where they make their name and initial so that because again there are not everyone but some certain people do seem to like prefer to like a, a lot of male readers prefer to read male writers and vice versa and that so obviously if you're writing in what is still considered a more male dominated genre like science fiction I can understand switching to that but at the same time wow yeah no it's as you said it's enough effort with writing and drafting and editing and re-editing and re-editing and re-editing and beta reading and finding an editor and cover design. Yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to remember the, <laughs> the different pen names as well and hoping that you remember how to spell it. And then if you're in a book signing and you're signing the wrong name because you're not paying attention. Oh, God, yeah, no, that's that sounds awful. I've just upset myself thinking about it. <laughs> that would be something we would do, though. Oh yeah, we definitely. would be at a book signing and sign the wrong name. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll just take that and give you a different book. <laughs> so, with that said, how would writing in different genres affect your author brand? So it does make it harder for some people to pin down what you write because some people's like, oh, if this book cover is black and red, that means it's automatically a, a horror book or you know things like that. And so sometimes people will look at your website and they'll try to guess what genre you write in based on just like the colors or the formatting of your website. And so when you think of it that way, it does kind of make it more difficult. If you write in multiple genres, you do have to consider, do you want to have, uh, do you want to have multiple newsletters or do you want to have um, multiple ways to reach out to people? Personally, I have one newsletter because I don't have time for that. <laughs> I have, I have, um, and since I'm an editor, I have a, a newsletter for clients and then an author newsletter. So I have one author newsletter and I'll just have like, this is what I'm doing in this genre. And then like, I'll break it down by genre. So if, if you're interested in this, you can read this. If you're interested in this, you can read this. Um, but it also depends on, you know, what your, what, how your brain works. Um, not everyone would be uh, open to doing that. Work, working in different genres can also, if you're, uh, if you care about bylines, things like that. If you, if you're trying to build up your brand, build up your name. If you, if you care about marketing and marketability, it can make you feel and seem more accomplished on paper because you'll have all these different 
genres, you'll have a lot of things to go on that CV if you ever, you know, want to, you know, apply for a fellowship or a grant. As was mentioned earlier, I think Rachel mentioned it, writing in one set genre tends to be something that people tell newer writers to do. Like there's ways to tell newer writers or first time published authors, okay, this is your genre now, stick to it. And, and I get that. It's very understandable before you can like become, you know, a master of many things. You have to master, the, you know, your first love or whatever. I, I feel like it's best not to box yourself in. And so if you're considering your author brand, a cool thing to do if you have Instagram or any other social media is to be very upfront about it. Um, that way people won't come to your Instagram expecting only one thing. So that if you say, oh, look, this is my poetry that I'm writing, or, oh, I'm working on this new screenplay, or, oh, I just got accepted into this fiction program. They're not surprised, or you won't lose followers or anything like that because you've always been upfront about it in the first place. But I think that on my Instagram, it has multi-genre writer, like right there, like that's like the second or third thing. <laughs> like I, because that's who I am. I'm not just, I'm not, I'm a multifaceted person. So I write in multi, like I write in whatever genre I feel like writing. And so don't come to me expecting me to only write in one genre. If you have a website, or if you're considering building a website, Think of what makes you happy instead of trying to fit the norms of a particular genre. Or if you write mainly in one genre, even if you do branch out into other genres, consider following the tropes or um, what's expected of that genre. If, if you don't want to have a hundred different pen names, or if you don't think you remember a hundred different pen names, consider making a website or making a link tree or something similar and having find like find my fiction here, find my nonfiction here, find my poetry here, or find my fantasy, find my um, science fiction, find my historical fiction, find my steampunk erotica here. I don't know, <laughs> whatever you write, <laughs> but make sure that's far removed from your picture books. But what it all comes down to is how big are you about branding to fit you and how big are you about branding to make yourself marketable to other people because you have to consider if they don't like you they probably don't really care that much about your author brand in the first place with your newsletter with your website with your social media is it something you would look at and be like hmm I'm pleased with this and if it is you already you're already off to a great start also this is just a sidebar side note but as a sensitivity and accessibility reader, please make sure that it is accessible so that other people can like notice and take note of it. Uh, Cause that really bothers me when like, if you use all these cute fonts that no one can read. <laughs> so, or you have a ton of like images that people who have visibility impairments cannot actually see. So sidebar, but that's, that's something to consider as well. The part where you said like you could have like one website and then direct people differently and all it takes is to have the, the main page have like different portals you know so the first thing they see is you know um you know read my science fiction here read my steampunk erotica here get the steampunk erotica picture book hey you never know might be a big seller and things like that and something you said that was it you said about make people aware that you're a multi-genre writer and that is really important because um, I know an author who the first few books, I think we had like two series and the first series were both YA and then the, I'm almost sure it's the third series was an adult season series and it's, they never, I don't think they ever said they were a YA writer. They just, they never mentioned what they were. They just, the first few um, series were YA and then they branched out and went to adult that had some spice, had a lot of spice. And apparently they got reviews of people being like so shocked. And part of that, I believe, is Amazon and the rubbishness. And if you've ever opened a, a Kindle, a book on Kindle, it skips you straight to the first page. 
of chapter one or the prologue, which means if you have any trigger warnings or content warnings that mention that it's spicy or that it's got torture or whatever in, um, you miss it. And apparently a lot of people who assumed, just assumed naturally that it was going to be YA were quite shocked when they got to the spicy bits. And I think some of that came out in the reviews. And this is a bit mean because it was never marketed as YA. It was never suggested of being that. So yeah, I think anything you can do to make sure that readers are aware that you write multiple genres and that it might not all be appropriate for certain age ranges or certain sensibilities, I think is really important because it can affect you in reviews. And unfortunately, people aren't always the quickest to read and be careful, you know, like checking things like that. I think they sort of grab on to that. Oh, this book was this. So it must be the same. So, yeah, any any time you can put it as much as possible to make it clear that no, no, this, this is not the same as that one I just wrote. <laughs> it's very important. Um, but yeah, I think that, that really stuck out to me when uh, when they got a few negative reviews and it was complaining about the content. And it's like, yeah, but it's it wasn't suggested that it was going to be anything other than what it was. But they just kind of missed the content warnings and just gone straight in thinking, yeah, it's another YA book. It's going to be nice and clean. And, you know, and it's like, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something to definitely think about. That's actually a really good point. Um, you do need to make your readers aware that you, you got to just plaster it everywhere, especially if you don't have a pen name, um, which is like what China, what you said on your Instagram, it says that you're a multi-genre, multi-genre writer. So it's, it's kind of up to people to be like, to read what's right in front of them. Because with the Kindle, I know it jumps you to the first page. I always immediately go to the cover and then and that's that's a, a me thing because then it's you know how it shows you the percentage of how far you've read and stuff like that that's a me thing that I'm like I technically didn't open 100% of the book if I don't start at the very very beginning even if it's just like three pages of like you know the copyright I'm not going to read the copyright but yeah that's a me thing but that's certainly something that you got to consider and this is kind of random, but not really. Earlier, China, you mentioned that you were part of a writer's circle. I I think it's very important for everybody to be part of some sort of writing group or have like a writing buddy or two or accountability buddy. So when you joined, the, I assume it's like feedback and like edits and critique and things like that. So when you first joined this writer's circle, was it a was it catered to multi-genre writers or could just anybody join or is it a writer's circle specifically for one of the genres that you write in so actually the writer's circle I'm talking about now I create it um but when I when I founded the writer's circle it was specifically for multi-genre right it was it was open for all writers of any genre so whether you um I founded it with another um woman who wrote who writes to this day only nonfiction. Um so and since I write fiction, we we're like we we wanted to make something where women could it's it's a um women writing circle. So you have to identify as a woman to be a part of the writing circle because we wanted to make sure it was a safe uh, safe communal space. Whether you write nonfiction or uh fiction, poetry, whatever you write whatever genre or form you can write in whatever form even if you write games like game developers can join the writing circle you uh it's, it's for anyone who writes anything can join and uh, get feedback or uh talk about the wo woes of editing or finding beta readers uh, uh you can find critique partners things like that in the circle just talk about you know day-to-day -day life but uh, we have different chat groups for different genres or different age ranges if you write uh, in different genres, but for primarily a certain age group. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I'm definitely going to be looking that up. Um, yeah, because I used to be part of a writer's group back in the day, and it was open to everybody. It didn't matter what genre you wrote or anything. I mean, it was mostly novels. If you wrote other forms, 
it you were more than welcome but it was mostly novels and short stories and it was any genre but pretty much everybody in the group wrote fantasy i was the only one who wrote cozy mystery uh so in some ways it was good because i got like an an unbiased opinion on the critique because some people they they had read in the genre before so they knew what they were looking for and others didn't so it was new to them so it was actually pretty interesting to get the different perspectives yeah i think one cool thing about the the circle is that we all read very widely and we all write um very widely we actually one of the um one of the ladies in the circle we we call her the cozy queen because she writes so much like she writes a lot of cozies um like you mentioned the word cozy and somehow she just like appears out of the ether <laughs> but um it's awesome I think it's it's really fun to get with other people who write differently from you because like you say you get an unbiased uh opinion but also you get to give unbiased opinions because like I said I, there are a lot of things that I do not read but if someone asked me to read or someone's like hey I need your opinion can you read this like these three paragraphs that feel wonky to me I'm like these seem fine like these work great to the untrained eye of you know I do not know anything about metaphysics but they look these look fine to me do you think rocket scientists will be reading you know this work because I feel like it looks fine <laughs> so it's it's fun to just get together and just chat or um we have a discord server or just chat or um rant about whatever in our discord server I can imagine there's a lot of ranting especially if you're stuck with like you know sagging middle syndrome or a plot hole or you you feel like you're in the editing circle of hell that you're just never getting out of and you're just going round and round it's like I've taken this comma out four times and put it back in three times and I'm not sure if Asian should be there and oh gosh no no I think that's really good I, I like the idea of of communities because writing is so lonely and you can get in your own head a bit too much and you can get to the point where you have those moments where you're like, this is the best thing ever. Everyone's going to love it. It's going to be a blockbuster. Uh, they don't happen very often. Instead, it's usually the ones going, this is garbage. Why are you trying? This is just an embarrassment. Who is going to read this? No one should read this. It needs to go in that drawer. And you can kind of get trapped in that, especially the more you read your own stuff the more you sort of fall back into, I'm so sick of this, it's awful. And it's only because you've read it a billion times and you need to have those little communities where you can share bits and say, does this sound okay or am I insane? And they can read it and go, this sounds great or there's a problem. So yeah, I definitely think that things like writing circles, writing communities, even just, like as Rachel said, just one other person that you can just sort of share things with just to help you get out of that funk. Um, Because we seem to get in those funks a lot as writers. It's definitely part of the creative process is to get into the self-doubting funk um i absolutely agree with everything that ari says except ari and i you and i are pretty bad accountability buddies uh we've tried that a, a handful of times and we would just meet for the podcast each week and be like did you write no yeah me neither well hey we're at our baseline yay <laughs> so with all of that said, Ch China, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. This was an awesome conversation. And uh, I can't speak. Before we go, would you like to share a little bit about yourself to our listeners? Uh, sure. So um, I'm not just an author and multi-genre writer. I'm also a freelance editor. I started my own company a few years back called Powell Editorial. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm the co-founder of a nonprofit writer circle geared towards uh, women of color. And we offer a safe space and community for women, regardless of genre, age, or location. And I'm just grateful to be, have been here on the podcast. And I'm thankful for both of you for having me. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure meeting you, really. All of China's links will be in the description below. So please do go check out her work. In the meantime, we're going to turn it over to you guys. 
Do you often write in multiple genres or forms? Let us know your answers in the comments so we can chat. And also let us know what your favorite genre and form to write in is, because that'd be fun. And remember, we do release a new episode every Wednesday. Next week, we're discussing how important is reading for fun. To ensure you don't miss it, hit the subscribe button on your way out. As always, thanks for listening to the Merry Writer Podcast. We'll see you next week. This podcast is brought to you by Writing Distractions. We're stalling on our work in progresses. The music, titled Inspired, is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.